And the next thing we'll do is we'll go ahead and configure build services. So this is fairly straightforward too. It doesn't take long. And for the build service configuration wizard, the first thing we need to do is specify the project collection that we're configuring build services for. So uh, you do need to have build services set up for each project collection that needs builds. Okay, and it's uh, by default auto-selected the local project collection that we just created with our configuration wizard. And since there aren't any uh, build services running for that collection yet, it sees that and lets us know, okay, there are no build controllers or agents running on any machines for this collection. So by default in this particular scenario, it's going to make a recommendation to use uh, this machine to set up one build controller and one agent. So you see on here it summarizes one controller and one agent. Now you can install more agents and uh, if you have a multi-core machine like maybe a quad-core machine that might be something you want to do. Uh, it also helps in that scenario if you have multiple hard drives to you know, deconflict uh, I.O. operations but because this is my laptop and it's not that heavy duty of a machine I'm going to keep it on the default. Uh, you can also choose to configure this later if you want but for this exercise, I'm going to use the default settings. So we're going to run the build service as network service, uh, which is a good way to go because that way we don't have to update a password every time the password expires. It's a machine account and it has limited permissions, which is not a bad thing for your build machine since it can run you know, arbitrary code. And we're going to use the default port for build services, which is 9191. The build service itself is a WCF service, so uh, it doesn't use IES, it just uses a WCF service host. So here we get a summary of what we're going to do, and it's going to set up one controller with that name and one agent. And if I want to, I can tweak these properties. One thing that I think I'll show you is the uh, new default working directory for TFS 2010 build, which is just a build subdirectory off the root system drive, and then uh, a build agent ID, which is an integer to deconflict multiple agents running on the same machine, and then the build definition path. So by default, this gives you quite a bit shorter path than you would get with TFS 2008, which hopefully will uh, you know, reduce the odds of you hitting the 260 character limit in Windows file paths. Uh, so let's go ahead and configure that. We're going to do the readiness checks first to make sure everything is okay. That all looks good. So now we're going to go ahead and configure. And this won't take too long. It's going to uh, do some security stuff to make sure that we've got the right groups and users set up and the right permissions set up. And because of this, you do need to be uh, both local admin and a project collection admin on the TFS instance in order to set up build services, new build services. And it's done. And just like that, we are all set to go with our new TFS instance. So just to prove it, uh, here's our team project collection. And Again, you'll see there are no team projects yet. That's empty. So if we go to our build configuration, you'll see we got build services running. And our build controller is ready and our build agent is ready. So let me go ahead and bring up Visual Studio. And I'm going to connect to my shiny new Team Foundation Server 2010 release candidate instance. You'll see here's my project collection that I just created. Or connect to that guy. And again, no team projects yet. Let's go ahead and create one. Uh, let's give it a creative name here. We'll use the Agile process template. New source control folder. We're going to go ahead and create our team project. So it has to download the process template from the server. And if you have a custom process template, you would need to upload that to your server first. It's going to provision all of the things prescribed by that process template. Those are things like work item links and work item types and so on.
And there is actually a way to programmatically create a new team project as well, which you couldn't really do with previous versions of Team Foundation Server. So I'm not going to walk through that in this video, but if you are interested in that, drop me a mail or uh, write me a note, and I will let you know. Uh, the solution to that particular problem is actually up on stackoverflow.com as well, which is a great resource. Okay, so there is our new team project. So you'll see we've got work items, we've got builds, we've got source control. You'll notice there are no uh, reporting or SharePoint nodes in the tree here because in this configuration we don't have that support for those features. So just so you know. So that is it for, uh, for this particular demo. And I hope you enjoyed it. If you have any questions, let me know. And uh, Next video, I will probably walk you through checking in your first solution and getting to your first build.